Over the past five years, we've put a lot of uh, work, uh, the whole team, into uh, learning the basic science of glaucoma, into uh, really finding out what are the earliest changes in, in the disease. Uh, we built instrumentation to detect those changes early, tested them in human subjects. Uh, and I think kind of the most uh, important, uh, impactful moment for me was when we actually uh, took one of the instruments we built and put it in the ophthalmology clinic. And when the first patient came in and sat down, it really hit me how all of that work was, was really uh, coming to fruition and that we were finally going to use some of this knowledge to uh, help benefit patients. Uh, well, one specific advance that my lab has contributed uh, to the Catalyst for a Cure is uh, we've developed a high resolution imaging methods that we can look into the eye and take very high resolution photographs of uh, layers in the retina that are affected early in disease. And over the past year, we've been able to do that uh, with much higher resolution. We've been starting to see details that we couldn't see before. And so we're very excited uh, that we're now finally uh, getting to uh, look at some of these early changes in gla glaucoma patients. We've developed new imaging technologies for the retina uh, based on uh, scanning a, a low power laser beam on the eye. So it's very similar to a retinal scan that you might see in the movies. Uh, instead of opening a door, we use the retinal scan to uh, take very high resolution pictures of the eye. And uh, we've made a great strides, both uh, myself and Alfredo Dubra, in improving the resolution of those pictures to the point where we can now see uh, individual uh, uh, ganglion cells and individual uh, uh, neurites. Uh, connections between the cells. One of the results of this collaboration is that we were able to take a basic science uh, finding um, from the Huberman lab, from Andrew Huberman's lab, that uh, certain layers in the retina are affected early in glaucoma. And we're immediately able to develop engineering approaches to see some of those changes in patients in human patients with glaucoma. This would not have been possible otherwise because usually the basic science labs don't talk to the engineering labs and physics labs which don't necessarily always have connections with uh, uh, clinical uh, ophthalmology. And so in this collaboration, we've been able to take a finding and advance it very quickly to the point where it can be used to help diagnose glaucoma. Well, if it wasn't for Catalyst for a Cure at a personal level, um, I, I think I, I, I uh, wouldn't have had this opportunities that I have. Uh, Catalyst for a Cure has, has uh, given me both the collaborators, uh, the, the support uh, to take some of our ideas and really advance them to the point where they're uh, helping uh, patients and having a real impact in glaucoma. I think that's a very unique uh, uh, aspect of the Catalyst for a Cure. Uh, most uh, granting agencies, federal agencies, uh, don't necessarily support this type of uh, collaborative research, research. And I think Catalyst for a Cure is a very unique opportunity uh, for us to do that. I, I'd like to say this has been a great opportunity for me as a scientist. I've greatly enjoyed uh, working with uh, the other three Catalyst for Cure scientists. I've learned uh, a lot from them. Um, I think uh, some of the connections that I've made and uh, the, the early results that we have um, will, I'm looking forward to over the next five, ten uh, years to seeing those through to uh, uh, fruition. We talk with, uh, talking with ophthalmic instrumentation companies um, and we're sharing our early results uh, with them. And it's a hope that with some of the results uh, coming out over the next year and the next few years that they'll see uh, this as a real opportunity um, to, to make this, these tools more wide, widespread and more widely used so that they can help detect and diagnose glaucoma all over the world.